our present human technology can duplicate only a tiny fraction of the intricate biochemistry which our bodies seem to perform so effortlessly. But we're just beginning the study of biochemistry. Evolution has had billions of years of practice. The DNA knows. Now, what if what we had to do was so complicated that even several billion bits of information wasn't enough? What if, for example, the environment were changing so fast that the pre-coded genetic encyclopedia, which may have served us perfectly well in the past, is now not perfectly adequate? Why, then, even a gene library of a thousand volumes wouldn't be enough. That's why we have brains. Like our other organs, the brain has evolved increasing over millions of years in complexity and information content. Its structure reflects all the stages through which it has passed. The brain has evolved from the inside out. Deep inside is the oldest part, the so-called brain stem. It conducts many of the basic biological functions, including the rhythms of life, like uh, heartbeat and respiration. The higher functions of the brain have evolved in three successive stages, according to a provocative insight by the American biologist Paul McLean. You see, capping the brain stem is the so-called R complex, R for reptile. It's the seat of aggression, ritual, territoriality, and social hierarchies. It evolved some hundreds of millions of years ago in our reptilian ancestors. So, deep inside our brain is something rather like the brain of a crocodile. Surrounding the R-complex is the limbic system, or mammal brain. It evolved some tens of millions of years ago in ancestors who were mammals, all right, but not yet primates like uh, monkeys or apes. It's a major source of our moods and emotions, our concern and care for the young. And then finally, on the outside of the brain, living in a kind of uneasy truce with the more primitive brains beneath, is the cerebral cortex, evolved millions of years ago in ancestors who were primates. 